And Pioneer Family Show, take two. Let's try this again. I'm going to check to make sure we're live on Facebook and YouTube, and I'm going to grab myself a drink since I didn't have time to do that. And I'm going to send it over to Ryan, and Ryan's can do some dancing and singing and cartwheels, and I'll let Ryan know when I'm back from getting myself a drink. Over to you, Ryan. Well, yet again, Ryan has to take to the lead and uh, welcome you all back on. This is my second intro. Normally, I make a little more money for the intros. So, wow. do you want to take the intro, Ricky? No, you're, we couldn't. If, we, nat- let, if we let if we let you good. take the intro, yeah, I know I'm pretty good. Right. Welcome, welcome everyone to the show. Mm-hmm. Again, we are uh, the clocks rolled back here in southern Ontario, so it's uh, it's really eight fifteen. So we're pretty good on the schedule tonight. Wherever you guys are watching from on this planet of Earth, welcome. Remember. This show works the very best when you participate. So don't be shy about the participation. Just get in there and participate away. The odds of us agreeing on anything might be slim to none. We might like what you say. We might not really like what you say. We might use it. We might not use it. Hey, guys, take from this show what you want. Learn, listen, chat, give your opinions, give your views. Listen to ours, but listen to yours. We can agree to disagree. Mike Parrish is with us. Howdy ho, Mike Parrish. Love manager Richard is to the left of me, or I guess on your screen to the right of you. Whatever it is, it is. That's Ricky. You will hear Leah from time to time coming in and out again. You could just say it plain. What? I'm the good looking guy, okay? Oh, yeah, you That's are. That's it. That's all you gotta you know say. What? I don't you know got, what you say. You got your Madonna like a virgin tank no, top on. That's right. It's your no, muscles. It's all muscles. 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 Muscles, 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 and more muscles. God, you're more. You muscles. are muscular. It looks scary in here with you. Doesn't matter how it looks. It's real. It's real. That's right. Yeah. Well, hey, the pioneer. Yeah. You see we don't want to look lovely. We want to look scary. Well, you are the scariest one. I like those little red muff muffs you got on there, bud. Yeah. Performance. So, guys, they look orange to the people out there. Oh. Not red. Well, they look pretty red to me. Remember, like, share, and uh, subscribe. That's all I have to say on that. Good evening, Brian. Good evening, Tracy. Uh, good evening, everyone that uh, has tuned in. And again, uh, sorry, we're about 15 minutes late. Michael Peebler, good evening. Good evening. Fun night tonight at Pioneer. We had a, a fun late night trainer. Now, now, Frank. We don't have to jump right into schedules just as of yet. You're trying to, don't swim for it, Ricky. You should have your glasses on for stuff like this. Fun night at the Pioneer Trainer, or Pioneer One Loft Race. That was a fun trainer today. It was amazing. I thought that Jeffrey might not have come today. But the 220th second pigeon, little Jeffrey, he was there. And then, and then I thought that would be it. The tap was off. Out there in the pitch black, an old, one of the new guys, David Wood, Bonnie, pitch black, landed on top of the board, hit the landing board from the roof, right in. Want me to tell you something. Remember the bird Bonnie, folks, because if Bonnie makes it to the end, when the sky falls, Bonnie goes right through. And Ricky, you're smiling at yourself in the camera. You're feeling all good. You're looking good. Come on. You're quiet tonight. Why so quiet? I, we don't know what Leah's been up to. She's, she's doing I shots. I always get that way when I've been whippersnipping all afternoon. Usually I have to, if I'm riding a mower, I have a few <laughs> drinks and I have a great time on that mower. Yeah. You know, but with the whippersnipper, it's a little harder to drink and whippersnip. Very hard. It's hard. It's very hard. I was going to get you the, the knapsack thing that hooks on so you can. Yeah, you can sip. have a tube. Yeah, yeah well, a tube. I know. I got a girlfriend. She's a nurse and she just IV. comes over, puts IV. the IV in, and that's it for me. Oh, hey. Oh, boy. Okay. So a lot of questions coming in and I've got to try and read them. Uh, I'm a bit far away, but. Uh... <clears throat> ABC Lost. So what's your, what's your uh, opinion on lost birds if they call you and the bird is three hours away? What should the fancier do? Okay, well, we know that obviously a lot of the fanciers don't want to go and retrieve the birds. Let's, who wants to drive three hours? I mean, nobody does. Well, now, unless you it, like driving. Unless you like driving. Okay. I so love driving. It's your responsibility. So the smartest thing you can do is find a pigeon guy in that area and ask him to go pick up the bird. 
and pick it up for you. Uh, that's the one thing you can do. The other thing you can do is talk to the people, see if they can give it some food, some water, see how it is, make sure it's not injured. You mean give them therapy? Yeah, give them a bit of therapy. therapy. You know, get them to take care of it for a week, you know, give it food, give it water, let it rebuild. And then when the day is right, you, you tell them, hey, when the wind's blowing a certain direction, so like the bird gets a tailwind, take the bird maybe to your local grocery store when you go grocery shopping or somewhere. Like a, a couple food land. Food land or Canadian Tire, Walmart, anywhere, soccer field, a couple miles from their house. Stop touching that, please. Actually, five times already. But I like to touch it. I know. You screw up what I'm saying. So focus on what we're doing. And You've stop already playing missed the important part. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you that after. And get them to let it out. As long as the bird's not injured, the bird will go up, do some circling, and it's got to make its way back. You missed a very important part of that. I, well, you were you were diddly daddling with that thing. So can you remember no. what you missed? Tell me. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you said feed it up, make it feel healthy for a week or two. Very important part. Very important part. Get the thing in a cage or something. Put it in your garage or in your basement. A little light on. Feed it in the garage, in the basement. Don't let it out. Don't let it outside in the cage, looking around, looking around. Because it's already, it's going to start to. Yeah, hold. You missed that very important oh, part. Wow. It's going to start to, to figure was... this place, you know. And then I would take it 10 miles away and I would let it out with uh, figure out the direction it's got to come back to where it lives let it out with a nice tailwind with a clear blue sky white puffy clouds and let her out take her about 10 miles away there you go that's what i would do good idea yeah and that way the wind when it goes up the wind will take it now it depends on how the bird comes to these people if it's coming and it looks like death on the driveway or in the garage like or it's wings hanging down it's limping it's all you, you gotta either find someone to pick it up or you're going to do the drive that's all there is it's, it, there's you got three options that's the, the three there's well, three options right. so, so use your common more. sense talk to the people and you know what if the people don't want to take care of it and they're whining bitching and complaining guess what you get in the car and you're going for and drive. you can't find anybody in the area right. just, just go, go and get up all right next question Leah. that was long I was like a paint. Well, I mean, the one point there um, that you miss are very serious. Some people get them and feed them, make them feel better. But what he does is he lets it out of his we, garage we, every day. Are we getting back into this and, again? And the bird starts focusing, okay. oh, this is wow. where I got to be. Anyways, right? Carlos or Silva it, says, does it aspirin. work that way with people? Wow. Guess what? Get in the car, go for a drive. That's it. Or find someone. But really, don't even bother somebody. Don't waste anyone's time. Yeah, in my opinion, if you if you somebody catches your get your bird and three hours away or five hours away or two hours away or two minutes away, it's not that person's responsibility to feed it and take care of it until there's a headwind or I'm sorry, excuse me, a tailwind. I mean, sure you can suggest it, but in my opinion, you get in a car and you go and pick it up. That's what you do. That's your bird. That's your property. That's your responsibility. Get in the car and go and pick it up. Or find somebody that lives out that way, make pigeon friends out that way, and ask somebody, could you go and pick my bird up? I'll meet you halfway. I don't know. Make make the effort to go pick your bird up. That's my opinion. Yeah, you should make the effort to go and pick it up. Have somebody pick it up. Or if the person sounds like, you know, I had a bird that flew, it wasn't even my bird, flew over from here, flew to Catskill Mountains in New York, which is 300 miles south east of here and the lady from in new york state catskill mountains called me up it wasn't even my bird it's, uh, you know somebody at the cu you know the sleeping beauties over there they said it belongs to me i said well no it's not my bird well the lady said well what am i going to do with it i said well you know lady for me to go there or the owner it's going to be 10 11 hours drive cross into the states cross back we don't have vet papers so i told her gave her some good advice what to do 
and she was very cooperative and it worked the bird flew all the way back from there back wow. to king city which is only wow. three miles from my place wow and ended up in somebody else's garage and i had another call from a woman that said is my name so and so and I said no and soon she said that I knew it was happening she said I got this bird it's in my garage and that bird flew back from Catskill all the way to King City 300 miles of being you told her exactly what to do I told her, tailwind and she did it exactly what to do puffy clouds tailwind flying this direction yeah put the thing up and it flew back but uh, then the other woman called me and after a while I thought the women were just after me that's what it was. All right, go ahead. Uh, Eddie Ortiz says, or pay for uh, shipping if you can't get the bird. Absolutely, get them to ship yeah. it to you. Yeah, especially if you're in the, in the U.S., you can do that, no in, problem. Because in you guys U.S., yeah. have the uh, option of postal service there. So we don't have definitely that you can make it happen. Okay, no other questions? Do you want to talk about the schedule first? Yeah, I always get back to the other. I, I always preach is a bird should never come home in a box. Well, and for, that's for, that's the bottom yeah. line. I, I don't. I it don't, never come home. Well, now we're explain. going to the extreme. That that was not the question. The question oh, was, okay. Sorry about what that. do I, mean, I do? And, three hours away. You go and right, get the and, bird. Let's yeah. move on now. We don't have until midnight to take up one subject this evening. We're already running late. So let's talk about the schedule. Oh, Leah, now. I'm going to just tell you this. The clocks have been rolled back, Leah. We're on the right time. We were 15 minutes late. Let's get on to this schedule. Wait, ready? Da -da. <gasps> the schedule. Oh my God, right? What are we going to do? You're unbelievable. <laughs> Go ahead. Just what do you want to talk about the schedule? It. I don't know. Is it good? Is it good? I think it's pretty good. It's tough. It's a tough. It's going to be a tough one. Going to be hell. Okay. Going to be a nail biter. Up. Stick your head over a little bit, Ryan, to the other way so we can see your smiling face while we look at the schedule there. Uh, there is a schedule for the races for September. What is it that we'd like to talk about? Let us know in the comments. Looks yeah, we've like got to get fun filled September and part of October to me. Hey, like they always say, it's a September to remember. The fun pack, uh, fact about the schedule is. The first, I don't know, four or five races are pretty much all training tosses. Um, is the schedule perfectly ideal? No. I know people love to come, go home, stay home and watch their birds. I know that. Uh, we ran into <coughs> an issue with those one lot birds. And uh, uh, if we stretch the schedule out for eight weeks, we're going to race into the end of October to the first week of November. And I know for a fact we're going to be missing races on the weekend anyways to go throughout the week because of the weather. Like we had last year, the last race on Mont Laurier, we couldn't go the Friday, couldn't go the Saturday, couldn't go the Sunday, couldn't go the Monday. We ended up letting them out on Tuesday. I sat in Mont Laurier for five days. Um, and again, that was a Tuesday race. So the, if you look at the schedule, race number one, you race on Friday. Oh, you don't like it. Okay. What do we want to race? We want to race one race a week. We race one race a week. We're going to be done without enough daylight and too far back in the year. And the problem is we're going to have bad weather and we're still going to be racing in the week. Oh. I'm going to race the one loft birds on this schedule because I got to get it done for them. Everyone else, I guess, if we want to go once a week, you know, do an extra race every week. If I could just interject here. Is it an ideal, I mean, the, at the end of the day, we have to get the eight, we have to get the eight races done regardless, whether we do it in eight consecutive weeks or we do it in this modified schedule. Is it ideal? It's not ideal for us even. It's not ideal. It's a little bit, a lot. It's a busy month and we get that and we fully understand that. Uh, to do it weekly starting September 9th and going eight weeks, that's going to bring us, depending on weather, could bring us into beginning of November. That to me and Ryan and Richard is an unrealistic expectation to expect these birds to be racing into November. So therefore, we did this modified schedule. 
is it ideal? Is it perfect? No, this hasn't been a perfect season because of the, the health issues that we had with the one loft birds. And then I'm sure our Pioneer Combine members, which we love and appreciate you, will say, well, that doesn't make a difference for me. No, it doesn't. But in the grand scheme of things, I got 80 lofts in the one loft that I have to accommodate as well. So majority rules, and this is what's best for the 80 lofts that are in the one loft, the birds, not even for, it's not for the fanciers, it's for the pigeons, to give the pigeons the opportunity to have a successful eight week series. And we felt doing it weekly and pulling it into November and late October, the way the weather is here, especially going north, is an unrealistic expectation. So we thought we'd do this schedule, get everybody mad at us now, <laughs> but prepare to do that schedule. And that way, when we get into end of October and the weather and it's wet snow, and everybody's saying we're crazy and what's wrong with you, we don't have to deal with it then. So that's what we've decided to do. We yeah, don't hundred percent like it either, but we're gonna work with it and that's what, the way we're gonna do it this year. Unfortunately, we have no other choice. And again, and again, if, if the first, if race one, it's 50 mile an hour headwinds, obviously we're not gonna go back then, you know, for the Sunday. We're gonna we're gonna judge it out, and, and this is just a, a rough guideline, right? But again, race one, race two, you know, they're they're training tosses. You don't have to train the birds through the week. You're gonna use the race as the trainer. Now, some people like to watch the birds. I like to watch the birds come home. If I couldn't, okay, I wouldn't. But there's we can even take the schedule and race one from Huntsville. Hell, we can let them up at two o'clock or three o'clock in the afternoon. It's not a problem. If that's what the people want, I'm not worried about it. I will, you know, we can bend certain ways like that. 90 mile race. How long do you think here? What are we going to wait? The bird should be home. It's going to be two, hour, two, two and hours. And a half, two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. The bird should be home. Maybe two your hours. Bird, roughly the birds will make it within, you know, Maybe three, four hour, hours. Should all be, your bird hour, should be home. An hour and 45 minutes. Depends Frank on the wind, right? <clears throat> says too much driving. You'd have to drive it regardless. We'd be going eight weeks regardless. So whether you do it spanned out over eight weeks or you do the modified schedule, you'd be driving back and forth the exact same number of times. If I could say you? something. I would. Yeah. I, would I, I don't know how you're going to get here eight times how, if you don't many, drive. How, how many weekend races are you having and how many, uh, like you'll have one in the middle of the week and then one on the weekend, we're right? We're gonna have, what do we have? We're going, we're going, we're, we're gonna have one, two, three, four, four, then I gotta go to the next month. I think four, four or five. Four or five weekends? Six, races? I think there's six. I think there's six, if I'm counting right. Six on a weekend, maybe. Am I right on that? Yeah. Yeah, um, six. Six, yeah, six, six on a weekend. Six. Six on the so weekend. Two. And two midweek. Right. And the first two, I mean, hell, I don't care. Let's drop some of the races if you want. I'm not going to drop the races. You know what? I got to put the races in for the one-loft birds. Everybody wants to go on those other Saturdays. We'll just do those on the other Saturdays. Take the prize money and put them in. Instead of going six, eight races for the combine, we'll go, we'll go uh, six races for the combine. And I'll do the other ones. And those who want to come and want to do the driving or want to participate, then you come and participate. It's, it's you know, it's not, this isn't perfect. This wasn't what we ever ordered up. Sometimes in October, you have some really nice weather. I know that. But a lot of times in October, we do get frost, you know. So, yeah. so you, you get up, he'll get up. I know I went to, took birds a few yeah, years we, ago. We know how the weather yeah, is. It was there. minus four degrees. Right. Right. It was sunny, yeah, it's, minus it's four. You can't liberate birds in that temperature. We get the that. end right. of October up north is too cold and too risky, in my opinion, to be racing. That's just my opinion. <laughs> Robert Daughtry, three races in one week is crazy. You know what's crazy, Robert Daughtry? What's crazy? Is we've got one loft races out there training birds five times and then sending them to the main races. I have absolutely no fear whatsoever 
that my one loft race course of the Pioneer will be prepared to do three races in one week because they've put the time in in the training and they will do it okay. no so, problem. So if you got an I, 80, I just, 80 mile race. I want to I want to look at what what what's a what's considered here a race. What are the three races? We got a bur- we got a what? What is the three? We got 100 miles, 100 miles, 160 miles. If we want, we'll start these pioneer birds to go 80 miles for the next 10 days. Or 100 miles if you want or 120 miles. Or as it's, long as they don't run into the word, extreme heat. The, the, word, extreme the word race. It, the birds train every day. We work the birds every day. This is nothing different for them. I, I, I know. I mean, you hell. already said that. If it's and, extreme you know, heat, I, extreme I, I see him down there in San Diego, Ron Steinberg, 100 miles on Monday, 200 miles on Wednesday, 300 miles on Sunday. That was three races. That's that's uh, what is that? That's uh, the, 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 that's six hundred miles. Were those birds in, one, in seven days? Were, were those birds even <laughs> worked the way these birds are worked? No, they're not. Do you know working. what I'm saying? I don't know. Uh, I Frank compare. Eichhorn, is it because of auction season coming up as well? Absolutely, one hundred and fifty percent. No, we have zero things set in stone, planned dates, quote unquote, dates for any auctions starting in the fall because we did not know how the race schedule was going to go. Therefore, we waited and we will wait until we have a better idea of when we'll be finishing the racing season because we do not start one thing until we're finished the other. So I will rest assured in your brain, Frank, and everybody else's brain because we don't want that little rumor going around as you know, the whole, we started the one loft race late because of the auction season, which again, was false news and a lie. Uh, please, let's not spread this rumor that it's because of the auction season that we have modified the season because we have not. That is absolutely not true. Moving on, Henry. I think the longer it goes, the more chance of hawk attacks. I agree with you. So I think the schedule will be the best for the birds. I agree, a hundred percent. Sorry about that. I got a four-year-old here. He had to get up and walk around and shuffle. Move your hand. Right, you just. Stop rubbing your hands, Don't too. Don't ever touch Thank my you. speaker again. You're driving me nuts tonight. It's just like, you're just like. You're getting off topic now. Yeah, well, I, I don't you, know what topic you want to get what on. What you're doing is, what, what, what you're like we, a singer that has a bunch of dancers. But you're still rubbing around. your hands. Well, because I Don't like rub them. Are hands. you nervous? It's your first time on? Yeah, I am. Oh, no, you. Sorry about that. Uh, Frank Icorn, weeknights, I do work work also. Uh, you know what? For everybody, I'll pick up everyone's birds. I'll no, go to this. No, I don't, no. Leah. I don't give a you're shit. You're not going to pick up everybody's birds. It's one month. It's, it's a it's a bus. Can I talk? We'll take the bus. We can take it's I, like a bus. I don't system. understand. Like we can we just have a normal conversation? It's one month. It's not even one month. During the week, it's two. To, it's two races in a one one month period. Is it not? Are there not two races during the week? I'm looking here. I just want to see the schedule. You know what, boys and girls? The winter is long, and it's approaching. And in the winter, we got all the time in the world to sit on the couch and, and relax and, and re regenerate for the next season. We're going to be okay. It's just one month of everybody's life, and it's literally, I believe, two races during the week. The rest of them are on weekends. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm looking. I mean, I am looking at. It. Okay, so we Thursday can night we can modify the schedule for the combine people, like you said. Instead of eight for the combine people, we'll do six. We'll roll whatever money into the six, so then they don't have to come during the week, and we'll just run the one lofters on the week during the week um, races yeah, if we want to do we, that. We can we can do that. I'm I'm good with that. I mean, it, it doesn't bother me. I'm just looking here. So you're gonna drive Thursday night for a shipping, okay? That that's during the week. You're gonna drive a Wednesday night for a shipping, and you're gonna drive a Tuesday night. So there's there is 
three. Oh, sorry. There's three, three in the week that are. Oh races. yeah, because the first one. Well, the first one is Thursday shipping night, which would have been Thursday shipping night anyway if we were going weekly, would it not? Yeah, but then you've got to get to come back on Friday and see all of us happy people again. <laughs> oh, I see. All right, and, and I get that they need one. time to rest. Just my opinion, and there's nothing wrong with opinions, I, I, and I totally appreciate and respect everybody's opinion. It doesn't have to be the same as my own. I don't think Ryan and Richard would have set up the schedule if they didn't think the birds had proper recovery time in between races. Yeah, would you guys? Know. Did I mean, you guys? I don't know how many days we train here in a row now. Like we, we you know, we train every day. Birds are an hour on the wing. Uh, I mean, look at it. Uh, Hunts, Huntsville is 94 miles. It's two two to three hours on the wing. Give them a day off. Hey, take them back out, 114 miles. Give them two, three days off, uh, four days off. Ship them to 160 miles. Give them a day off, another day. Ship another 114 miles. I don't know. I don't know. You know what? Is it perfect? Again, it's not. It's not perfect. We did this. This wasn't the the, the ideal plan, but uh, I know one maybe thing. Maybe okay into... if you're home all day every day. Yeah, we get that. People work. We understand. I'm not sure. Well, I, I don't know. I don't care. I, guess, all I don't know. I, I guess run it all November. All vote. I don't know. Run it all. We knew November. it wasn't good. We knew it wasn't going to make everybody happy. We knew people were going to be upset about it. I don't know. Uh, if I, I do it the other way and go eight weeks and we're into October and I got wet flurries, what's everybody going to say then? Yeah, Who's they're all going to get on. Can you be quiet for a minute? On. Who's going to stand up for me then and say, oh, no, they did it because everybody wanted to go eight weeks. No, y'all are going to throw me under the bus and throw us under the bus. Right. And that's the way it works. Uh, my, so I'm going to protect the pigeons and I'm going to protect oh, myself. Oh, oh, oh. And Ryan's going to protect him and Richard and the birds and do what's okay, best for the birds. Oh, All right. I'm going to go and take years. a drink and you guys. Okay, fine. Oh. I know a few years ago I took the birds up. I don't know. I think it was I don't, I don't, I don't want. No, and I, I, I parked and I, I slept in the truck. Okay. And I got up in the morning. It yeah. was uh, Lashford. Right. Or, uh, Lashford. Uh, uh, you know, when it, you it was actually snowing okay snowing okay good and and, and like a, a drizzly what, wet snow if we if we push it back i will hear them complain that the weather is shit i will hear that if we race them like this i will hear that the schedule's too hard <laughs> can i ask you which way do you want to bake it which way is there any perfect way i know it's inconvenient for is people. there a perfect way though no, is it but i know it's no. inconvenient for people that have to come yes i know that just listen let let me talk. talk but i can remember years ago i used to run the kids to sports and i'd be i'd get home at 11 30 12 o'clock at night i'd hit the bed and i'd have to get up at two o'clock in the morning to go to work and i'd work till 11 or 12 come home, play with the birds, whatever I did. And then maybe the next night I have to go to sports again. Oh, so I was, I was running on two or three hours sleep a day. Now who wants to run now, like that? Hey, guess what? I'm a hero. Okay? I, did, I'm a I, hero. Did, I did say, so, why don't we let the first four races, we let them out if the weather's good, mm -hmm. early afternoon, one o'clock, two o'clock. Then people can watch the birds. Then people can watch the birds. But I, I think what people are saying is What's wrong they have to work and they don't want the inconvenience of coming because they work till seven o'clock at night or I, six o'clock. I don't know what people. So that's, that's I don't know what problem. people's schedules are. Right? right. I I don't work. I don't work. I'm lucky. I well, don't yeah. do anything. Yeah, you don't work. I sit Dad on my ass here. Richard doesn't work. And I twiddle and I my thumbs. So we wouldn't understand about work. So we get it. That's right. And I, you know, but like I said, you want to let them out later? I, Huntsville, three o'clock in the afternoon. No, no problem. If you, you don't want to work, do it, you don't work. You get calls here at twelve o'clock. Uh, that's not work. Night. You get calls here at three o'clock in the morning. We're not talking about that's not work. That's fun. Oh, okay. Remember that, Ricky. You you don't know what work is. Let me get back to you the comments because we we have a lot of them and clock's ticking. Um. Okay. ABC Lofts asking about molting. Ah. 
Hector, I'm going to get to your question in a moment. I just want to get to the rest of these schedule comments and questions because I don't want to leave anybody out. All right. Mike Vandiak, I like the idea of playing it by ear. An easy race. Jump them back a few days later. A really hard race. More rest needed. Between, let Ryan and Richard make the call. Henry says, <clears throat> also with his modified schedule, if you have a rain day, it's easier to postpone a day. Frank Eichhorn says, what do the other Pioneer members think? Mo, Chris, Troy, Troy and Henry. Uh, and you know what it, and you know what? It pays the same. Yes, it does. <laughs> Henry is uh, super excited about hot dogs three times a week. You betcha, Henry. Absolutely. I have to cough again. So, Ryan, if you could read uh, Troy's comment there, if you can oh, squint. I, got I, under I understand Frank. I understand Frank has to uh, drive a lot. It's not easy for him. For me, it's only 30 minutes. Well, I, I and I know that the, the drive is... The drive for anybody. The drive for me. The drive for me. I got to drive or he's going to drive up to each of the race points. We're all driving. We all drive. That That is true. I wish that none of us had to drive. Actually, if we could maybe hire an Uber, if we could hire Uber, you could get the Uber to bring it and get an Uber to take it back. But I can't do that. I mean, maybe on those and... days during the week or, or the week ones, you, maybe you can meet a meeting point halfway to pick the birds up and we can bring them our shipping for our members for our combine members club members of which we have i think four members four amazing members four or five members um i lost my train of thought now uh shipping is all day on whatever day shipping is it's not like a regular club where shipping is between six and eight o'clock on the dot don't be later don't be earlier you know it's all day. We have shipping all day long. So if you need to drop your birds off in the morning, we can accommodate you. You know, later on in the evening, we can accommodate you. We can accommodate you. We will make the accommodation for our four or five of our amazing club members, of course. We don't want to make anybody angry. This is supposed to be positive and fun, right? This is, yeah. we didn't want to, we didn't do this to upset people. We just couldn't think of a, a better schedule to, for the birds. Uh, Robert right. Daughtry, can you start your racing in August? It's August 29th, so I think we've kind of passed that mark now. <laughs> every, every year we start the first week of August, normally the first. We had sickness. Now, we would have taken the one lock birds and said, F-U-C-K-E-D, the birds. Let's just start training. Hell with them. Train, train, train. You know what you get? You get what you have in every other one lock race around here. How many they lose? They just fall off. Can't even come home. Three, we had 900 one day, down 300 the next day. I wonder where they went. They were looking good. I'm feeding peanuts, gophers. I'm feeding cheese, whatever the hell I'm doing. It's all bullshit. So what did we do? We looked at the pigeons. Said they need more time. But unfortunately, I'm not in Spring Hill, Florida. I'm not in Texas, where I got all year long. If I was in any other, any other place in Canada, we would just give it eight weeks and start it started in September and run it all the way through eight weeks. But we, the problem we have is the snow and the shit weather. And you want to know what's going to happen. I've already told you, you will come for me. Why are we racing so late? Why are we racing so late? Why are we racing so late? And I'm going to hear that noise. I'm hearing this noise. I'm hearing that noise. Guess what? The schedule, let's be honest. It sucks, right? But what are we going to do? We can go here and complain, or we can say, hey, let's see how many good days we get here. Let's see what we can put together and get it done. Mike Parrish or just cut some of the races out. So for the one loft, we're going to do the eight weeks. Uh, right. Unless something catastrophic happens, we're going right. to go the eight weeks. For our combine folks, if we want to come together and you guys want to agree on six of them or five of them or four of them uh, or whatever you guys want to work out, we can absolutely take the money band money and instead of dividing it into the eight races, we can divide it into four or six 
or however many you guys want, however to accommodate you guys, we can do that no problem. And if you still want to race in the midweek ones when we're going up and you just want to take them and see how you do, you're more than welcome to come on the truck. We don't want to make this bad. We want to make it good. We want to be positive about it. <clears throat> Michael Peebler, if you remember, they had young bird sickness and held them off from starting early. That is right. That is why we are delayed. We wanted to give the one law birds some more time to be able to uh, recover from the sickness they had. And I know our combine people will say, well, that's not my problem. And no, it isn't your problem, but I'm sure you, you guys wouldn't want unhealthy birds on the truck going up with your birds. That's why we postponed it. Okay, Henry, would it be possible to meet Frank somewhere maybe at 489? Absolutely, we could figure something out. We, we, if you guys know us, we're flexible. We will work with you. Ryan will work with you. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, I just have to figure out how I'm going to scan the birds. That's all I've got to figure out. So I'm going to put a generator in the truck. Maybe I'll take the other truck, put a generator in it. Uh, then that way I can run the computer or, you know, run well, the clock. Maybe we could just meet him midday or, or something, or we could meet Kathy somewhere midday. Maybe she could bring them down halfway, meet her at the 400, bring them back something for the, just those races that are the midweek. Oh, yeah. ones. Right. We right. can work together. And, and again, people that want to wait for birds, we have no problem. Hey, if everyone if everyone says, hey, normally I'm home at 3 or 4 in the afternoon, we can let the birds out a little bit, 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock, whatever, from those three short races there in the week, so you can watch them come home. It doesn't bother me. A 90-mile nine, a race. Uh, it's two hours. You got your daylight. It's going to cut down to uh, 7 o'clock. Let's say night. 7 o'clock at night. So you got, uh, let's say, you're going to say maximum time on a wing. Let's say he's got a headwind of 20 mile an hour headwind. So at 90 miles, let's say you're going to give him uh, three hours, th three and a half hours. Yeah, you got six so, hours to get him home. So, so you make sure you let him out by uh, two o'clock. Yeah. Between 12 and two. You could do yeah. that. You could do that. No problem. It's no, it's, it's no different. It's no, it's, it's, it's training, but it's a race. They don't know the difference. Tracy says the, the first delay in one loft race was due to the avian flu restrictions. That's right. Actually, I forgot about that. We were delayed initially the first two weeks because of the avian influenza. And then we got the sickness. So that further pushed us back. But you know what the great news is? The great news, the birds are doing fantastic. So our little delay and what they needed, they got. And look how they're great they're doing. Yeah, I don't know. Frank Icaron, go with it, and we pick the ones we want. Yeah, that, I mean, that we works for us. If you guys want to do that, that works. But y'all have to agree to it, because if there's the money involved, and if it's for the band races, you all have to agree then to just go to the six races, or the five races, or whatever or you, you, you just agree skip, on. Or you skip that race if you don't want to ship it, and that money's still there. I mean, I don't know. But we got we got birds here uh, with money bands on in this race. Our birds are going every week. Right. Our birds are going to go with what we, we ordered them to do or what so, we're asking. So, but what I'm saying is these people we don't, skip We don't race. need to race for any of the money. I, I'm not interested you, in racing for any You can race for the money in the money races, in the six money races, and in the non-money races. If there's uh, banded birds, they will compete just for the one loft in those two or three races that's all yeah. the money's still going to oh. be there either way uh, it's not it's not a life or death thing on the on the money bands well for some, for some for, 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 i'm saying for us it's, it's not i'm saying it's not life or death if we have to take those out for us uh, whatever it is what it is way of the road okay so guys members decide what you guys want to do amongst yourselves or we could have a meeting or whatever you want to do, and we'll figure it out. But that's the schedule, and it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun-filled September and a bit of October. Yay. On that note, what do we want to talk about next? Oh, well, uh, let's talk about, I guess we can talk about this week's winners. We had a, we had a bunch of new, well, 
We had a good group of winners this weekend. Uh, just getting back to the schedule. Gets really complicated. Just go with the schedule. It does not make it complicated if, if we don't make it complicated. Just don't overcomplicate it. That's all. Agree to six or five or four. Or we'll just say it. the ones on the weekends are the ones for the, the combine members if you want to do that. Or, or we just, don't have to overly just, complicate it. I don't yeah, think. Just, I don't know. Troy, leave the schedule the same, and we pick and choose when we want to race. I took the days off for the 9th and the 15th. Okay, well, Troy accommodated his work schedule. Now, Troy, just a reminder, just a reminder, Troy, and that's great that you took those days off of work. We do not control Mother Nature. So if by chance, the 9th and the 15th, there's torrential downpours, and we have to uh, uh, push the schedule back or ahead or whatever, Please don't get mad at us that you took the day off of work. We have no control over that. Okay. Yeah. On that I note. Agree. I agree. It's still not a perfect schedule and it's not gonna even after we get off this, it's not gonna be perfect, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make we you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna make the best out of a bad situation. Okay. On that note. This week's winners. What should we talk about? This week's winners are the big ones, man. They went a little further than the rest and a little faster. They did. They did great. What did you guys think of the race? What did I think? Um, what did I think? Good. It was a headwind. They came, uh, they came good. They came real good. I, I you know, you still, we're still looking at 50 miles. Uh, they're, they're very, very, this group seems to be very smart, very resilient, um, and they're handling everything we're throwing at them very well. From even today, the graduations, uh, they've handled it all. They handled the, the side of the water there very, very good. And I think they're ready to go to the next step. Strong pigeons, what do you think, Dan? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they did very well. Broke up a bit, and that was good. Yeah. I mean, not perfect. We're not, we're not looking to get... You know, every time, you know, 50 on a drop, 50 on a drive, or 100, 200 of them on the drop, we're still in training. Yeah, yes, it we doesn't matter how much training you have. You right. take 230 birds to 200 miles, you're not going to get 100 on a drop. But you're not going to, you know, they're always going to break up. But, but yes, right? but what I'm saying is when you look at the two miles, all they all came on one drop, and the 10 miles, they all came on one drop. Yeah, as you stretch out, they start to stretch out. You've seen that today in training. Look at today. Birds, different birds, different gears, different different things happen. It's different. Uh, the chemistry is not all the same. It's, it's form. Some birds get into a better form than other birds. Mm -hmm. A bird with a, a wee bit better form is going to... He's going to accelerate. His, yeah. his mind works better. His body works better. And as we go through this, uh, the system, uh, the training, and, the, and moving on, that all changes. That's yeah. all going to change. You can't get the whole works to all do the same thing. Yes, maybe you can from two miles or five miles or ten miles. But things change. You get a headwind. You get different. The heat, the headwind. Cloud cover, the mentality, the things change, right? It, it's, you know, uh, we're not all uh, uh, top-notch and, 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 players and, and every again, single day. And again, you take a look at when you get into any type of a headwind, it creates a totally different game. Tailwind racing is different than headwind racing. They're two different sports. And we, and we still haven't had them two hours on the wing. We haven't had that. And we're working towards that now. Now this is the next, this is the real move next. The next one is the, uh, let's see how good you are. That's right. It's coming to that now. And, and yeah. that's good. Leah, questions? I forgot about Hector's question. Sorry about that. Oh, sure. um, can you, oh, and then we're going to get to our uh, top 21 from your hotspot number four. Uh, can you explain the molt for me, please? Is it better to breed birds in January or May to race in August? Better to breed birds in January or May to race in August. 
it depends where you are and you know here where we are we darken them so the birds hold the hold the flight feathers and molt out the body feathers so they're always flying with a full wing now i don't know again where you're from i think he's from new, new jersey or new york area or out that way i don't know if you can darken out there i don't know if you're allowed to i don't know if there's rules or that but i would i would darken the pigeons um and it, it doesn't matter I, when you breathe in january they get naturally darken. Right. i understand i'm not getting into a whole darkening system i understand that but you just want if you're in answer. but if you're in florida you're not darkening your pigeons well that's right but right in florida if they raise them in january they're still getting naturally so darkened. They're, they're raising, they're raising in October or, or, or November, they're, they're, but they're done the molt anyways. When you're racing in August, and you're breeding. I, I would probably put your birds on the dark. I, you know, and you, and you can breed them in February and, and, and race in August, no problem. And they have full wings. The body body's molted out, perfect. Look at your birds; they're perfect. Uh, Mike Van Dyke says January was better, but May can work. You can start breeding and take take a look at it. Breed in January, breed in February, breed in March, breed in April, breed in May. Take a look at what youngsters put them on the darkening system, if you want to. See how they do. You see which babies are, are, are have got it. I always think if you breed early and you don't get them out, I, I always think the birds are a little bit older and a little dumber. But you get good ones. You know what? A good one is a good one. You'll find it. Believe it or not, we got some up there. Yeah. They're still squeaking. Yeah. They're, they still got that little baby voice when you pick them up. Yeah. And you've had them on all these training tosses, and they're they come and they're coming. They're like, no yeah. problem. They're coming. Right? Yeah. They have not fallen back at all. So, uh, you know. Mike Van yeah, Eric born in May, go all the way. So you should be fine either or, Hector. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's... I think Mike's got a good point. Get them out of the nest, get them out, walking, flapping their wings, get them on the bicycle and ride. Yeah, go ahead, Leah. We're going to show our top 21 from your hot spot number four. I'm just going to show the picture. I have pictures of all 21 today, which is super exciting. So we have uh, 21st Tulip from Frank Eichhorn, winning $100. 20th Black One from JK Loft. FYI, folks. Black one is Jeffrey's girlfriend, and she sure is a beauty. 19th, we have uh, Maddie from Erie Shores Flyers, Ken Lavoy. 18th, Marlon Brando from everybody's favorite cheer captain, The Lion's Den. Well, now 17th, I've got Maddie. So I'm going to have to fix that. I think 19th was, uh, actually, I think that's wrong. I'm going to have to fix that. I'm going to find out who uh, 19th was, and we're going to get back to that one. Sorry, guys. Oh, there's 19th. Look at that. 19th, Warfighter, Green Lofts, uh, Heather and Mike Green. 16th, Big Mama. I do have her photo. It will come up. I will find it. Uh, 15th, we have Julie from Stingray Loft. 14th, Absolute Pepsi from the London guys. Oh, there's Big Mama there. Look at that. 16th, Big Mama, the Ratter women. 13th, Royal Flush from Aces High. Oh, boy, look at this. 11th, Grande. Actually, you know what? I think these are wrong. We're going to start this over, Ryan. Give me a moment. Back to you. Back to you while I get the proper order. Pack to me, proper order. You know what? I thought I was going to do it a smart way and it ended up being a real dumb way. So we're going to have to do it again and we're going to do it the quick way. <sighs> You've got number three there, right? I got number three. This is just a bad evening all around, isn't it? You know what, like, Why is it out of order? I put it in the correct order on the website and then I'm like, oh, I'm looking from my laptop and not from the website. So... We're going to go quickly here again through them. And you've got number three, so we're going to go quickly. I won't read them. I'll just go through them on the screen. Here we go. Let's try this again. 21st. 20th. 19th. 18th. 
17th. We'll look, 15th. Oh, Leah. 14th. 13th. 12th. 11th. 10th. 9th. 8th. 7th. 6th. These are all up on our website, guys, so you guys can have a look after the show. Fifth, fourth, now Ryan's part. <laughs> Coming in third place. Oh, from hotspot number four, the water crosser, 50 miles. Good old Gloria, winning $100 from Century 21. Bill Robertson, Ryan's got Gloria there. Let's see, good old Gloria. Again, another nice week of her. Looks the same as the, I think the last two weeks this bird's been in the money. She's molten still super heavy. This isn't normally how I like to have them, but uh, what can I say? I had to sacrifice the darkening for the flights and the molt. Again, why whine about it, right? Let's make the adjustment and keep going. And that's what I did. And uh, so far, it's paying off. I don't know how I'll fare out in the, in the end. But uh, right now, I think Gloria, she's firing on all cylinders. Beautiful black hen. She's, she's a dark, dark checker. A little bit of coppering there in her. You can see it. She'll molt that, I'm sure, away. But uh, real nice pigeon. Go ahead, Ricky. <clears throat> While Lop and Richard uh, all my lap. Gloria. Mike Parrish has an interesting comment, and we're going to uh, see Jerry here at the end of the show. But Mike Parrish says, I was thinking of Jerry. I was watching a movie where they did experiments on racing pigeons. They took birds, put contacts in their eyes that made them blurry slash blind, and they still made it home. They took more pigeons, made it so they couldn't smell, and none made it home. Very interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Because Jerry's is Jerry missing an eye, or she's got a, a, the patch on the eye? What's going on with Jerry? We're going to talk about Jerry yes. at the end. But. Yeah, let's. let's. <laughs> well, you know what? Well, I get the number two bird, and congratulations to Century Twenty One. And FYI, eh? Oh, that I want to give a big applause. round of applause to Bill Robertson. <laughs> Message me. He said, "Hey, Ryan, this bird and the other one. He's got nest mates here." He says, "Munich." Van Ockel, your auction. He says, making me money. He says, I like that. Good quality pigeons. He said, thanks thanks for selling the good, you know, good mm -hmm. pigeons. And there it is. Maybe she's not the most beautiful, but uh, when the money comes down, this pigeon shows right up. Congratulations to Gloria and Bill Robertson. We're going to move on to your hotspot number four, second place winner. Bring up the photo. Ooh, last week's first place winner. Second place in your hotspot number four, 50 mile winner is Gibbs from PigeonEmpire.com, Guido Madruzin. We're gonna head over to Ryan. We're gonna head over to Lothmanage Richard. Hi, Lothmanage Richard. Hey there, Leah. Hey. <laughs> As we wait. Here he comes. The birds are faster than Ryan, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, birds are faster than me. Ryan. Please don't shuffle your feet when you walk across the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you you're, you bang on the floor so hard, all the dishes are rattling. We're, I'm I'm selling a loft manager. If you keep up these shit performances, guess what? I won't be able to give you away. Always remember, you got to have somebody to beat. You can't beat yourself. Here we have Absolutely. Gibbs from PigeonEmpire.com, second place. Every week, ace pigeon right now, high points, high points, the highest bird, master breeder points. And uh, Leah, what do you yeah. think about activation of this bird for the $100 pick bird per week? I'm surprised it hasn't been picked across the board already well the owner says it doesn't want to put pressure on the pigeon so guys this one's uh 
you can come and handle them. Go ahead, eh? You want to see the bird that beat you week in and week out? That one. Guys, buy all eight shares on the pigeon and fly a Guido Madrusa pigeon. Guido in every race. Guys, I'm not lying here. I do my homework. I like to see confident pigeon flyers, and Leah knows this about me. Nova Scotia Challenge. 200, 500, 750, $1,000 pool birds. Guido's got all his birds pooled. Guys, this is the best one he's flying all year right now in all the races. Go ahead and take it. It's 800, one-time bet. You own them for all eight races. You think you can do eight, Ricky? Well, I'm looking underneath. He's nice and clean, mm. but I would have to say yeah, he's a little purpley than pink. That's what I'm seeing. I'm well, going to be honest. What, that's what happens when I whoop you. No. I, I got to turn on the jet. What, what does a little purpley mean? They're working. They just worked That's tonight. Right. They right. dug. Right. So I see a little yeah, purple. A little purple. But nice and clean. Don't worry. For 800 bucks, someone please buy this one for me. I'd like to fly it for, for eight weeks. Oh, that's a darn nice hat. It's, it's a super pigeon. Did we find it with the bloodlines? You blood got a full ring, wing there, too. The bloodlines are? Probably has the animal in it. It's got pox, too. A little bit of pox coming through. But what a nice pigeon. Full of fight. Very nice bird. Congratulations really nice. to Gibbs and Guido Madrid. <laughs> Moving right along to our first place winner. From Jones Family Loft, Big Mac. I think this is Big Mac's first time in the winner's circle. Jones Family Loft. I love Madge Richard. Hey. Hey. <laughs> As we wait for Ryan, where did he have to so go down to Ryan. the loft again? He should have brought the bat the bat. I don't know where he went. I think he got stuck out there in the in the swamp or something. <laughs> yeah, in the swamp. Me in, in the swamp. swamp. Ricky, go away. You're up going up next to get big old Jerry, one eyed Jerry. All right. <laughs> Here we have Big Mac from Jones Family Loft. Ryan? Other way. I know there what I'm go. doing. I've done this a, a long time. Oh, wow. Fun fact about this pigeon. If you look at the, the photo, Leah, you did the photo where Jeffrey got his ass beat. Remember that day? The video. On the bucket? Yep. Yeah. This is the beast here that did it. Look at the big greasy... Greasy boiler on his nose, the pox on his nose. But I put my hand in the basket to take him out now. And he grabs me and he pinches me. Mm -hmm. So our first American big winner right here. I see he's gotten stronger than he was a couple of weeks ago. You can see the development across his uh, shoulders. He, he's, he's a big man. He's a big, strong man. A little bit deep. As a side note, for those of you wondering... We've got Guido on the line, the breeder of Gibbs, our second place hotspot number four winner. And he says Gibbs is all hormones with a touch of gallo on the top. Interesting. Uh, Good to know. Thank you. But interesting. Interesting, interesting. Gallo blood again, Alia. Doesn't it come to the top? Yep. Very nice. There he is. And like I said, guys, you want the bird. If you want me to tell you, it's leading in master breeder points. Scott Hall, he's got that one. Uh, but for the pick bird, for those eight races, it's $100 per race. Leah, I don't know why we thought so small. We should have had those at $2,000 a bird. Yeah, we should have. Also, a big congratulations to our hotspot number four Pickbird winner, who was Greg McFarland, who only bought one share. So this was a $10 investment for Greg McFarland, and he was the winner of the Pickbird pot, winner of $800, which is awesome. Well done. Round of applause to Greg. All right. The money moved to the U.S. this week. We want to talk points, Ryan? Yeah, sure. Let's. Uh, okay, yeah. 
let's talk points and uh, did you, uh, yeah, let's talk points. So there's your uh, points after four races, top 10, your master breeder points. First, of course, Gibbs, pigeonempire.com with uh, 1,189 points. Second place, Prince from Mike Katowski with 1186. Third, Fergie from Boss Babe Loft, 1145. Fourth, uh, Teresa, always next year, from Momo Beware with 1145. Again, tying with Fergie. Fifth place, Adele from Boss Babe Loft, uh, 1100 in each points. Sixth place, Angel from Diamond Dave Racing Loft, 1105. Seventh place, Ryan Koch from Henry Ratter, 1091. Eighth place, Gloria from Century 21 with 1090. Ninth place, Marlon Brando from the Lion's Den with uh, 1,081. And 10th place, Maddie from Erie Shores Flyers with 1,078 points after five, or excuse me, four hotspot races in our boot camp series. So well done to our top 10. Round of applause. <laughs> that you, Ren. Yeah. Now, did we want to discuss uh, with the with the uh, what we were looking at there today on the Winnie? Oh, with the point we updated the yeah. Point. We, yeah, we had to update the points. Um, we were having, I guess you could say, I guess you could say the birds are still clocking fat. Uh, the pads are real good. The pads are real good, but. Uh, the birds are some of the birds are clocking faster than the pad can pick it up. At so the beginning, there were especially. Birds, yeah, at the beginning. So we had noticed that in each race there were birds that had missed that shouldn't have missed. And we're not gonna refly those races and, and, and go around and around and around. So what did we do to I guess give the birds points? We took each race, the last flight that the birds were in, that the birds that had missed on the hot spot race, they went to the last flight. And let's say the bird finished 95th. We use that race for those points for that. And you'll see a manual entry there. It says MA beside it. And those birds uh, honestly just missed the pad. So, yeah, they missed the pad. Yeah. So we awarded them points based off of the training toss before the hot spot race that they missed and they were awarded points based on that position that they clocked on the training toss before. So there was about, how many did you have to fix today, Ryan? Cause you did oh, that. I had, I had to fix about uh, 20 or 30. 20 or 30 over the past four races. Right. But uh, the majority of them were at the first two, right? Yeah, first two we had, spots. yeah, we had the nothing, nothing was yesterday at all. That was good. And uh, it was it was three yeah two I think it was two and it would no it was three it was three and one three and one were the the most missed. So that's what we did. So just an FYI, all the points have now been updated. Uh, who was missed yesterday? Yesterday, who didn't come home? Owen Cleveland, Owen Money, and uh, uh, Jones Family Lost Birds. Uh, Return of Mac. Return of the Mac. But those legitimately did not come home. They didn't miss the pad. They just didn't come home. So pads are now working in all three lofts correctly. Yeah, we doubled up the pads. So nobody misses. Right. Okay, so let's go and get Jerry. And okay, Ricky. Uh, Loft manager Richard goes and gets Jerry. Ryan and I will talk about the $100 pick bird for the races. If anybody has questions about that, we'll talk about that while we go and get Jerry. Go get your air right here. Go out, take these off. Yeah, take them off, please. And take my bird outside. There he goes. There he goes. Shuffle. Um, while Loft Manager Richard goes to get Jerry, also team points. LMR, eight points. Ryan has uh, 77. Loft Manager Richard's got a little bit of catching up to do, but have no fear. He will do it. So congratulations, Loft Manager Ryan, once again. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's interesting to see how how uh, different it is at this point. But his birds look super good, and uh, you know, what can I say? He, his birds are going to turn on here, and you can see them already starting to starting to 
to climb, climb, climb. Today in that uh, in that drop, there were seven birds. I think it was four for me, three for him. He he's gonna be there. He's he's got the, a little smoother feather, and and I will pick his feather over mine. Just saying. No doubt. Uh, did you want to talk about? Can you put your phone down because it's awfully distracting when you're on the phone when we're on the show. Oh, so if you could just put it I, down. I wasn't. I wasn't please. on the phone. Well, whatever. Just don't touch your phone because okay. it's distracting. Uh, the hundred dollar Pickbird series, which just opened uh, yesterday for breeder activation. This is for our eight race series. We will also have the ten dollar Pickbird series, the same way that we're doing it in the boot camp. Uh, it's going to carry on into the race. Uh, the races. We will still do the three shares for the ten dollars for the ten dollar Pickbird series. But we've also implemented now the hundred dollar Pickbird series for those of you who want to invest maybe a little more money um, and maybe win a little more prize money uh, every week. We have developed the hundred dollar Pickbird series. Uh, sold each bird has eight shares attached to it each share counts as one race breeder activation first up breeder activation ends september the third so that means all of our breeders you have until september 3rd to activate as many shares as you want in your pigeon whether it's one two five or all eight that's up to you but whatever you don't select by september 3rd on september 4th this hundred dollar pick bird series will be opened up to the public which means anybody else, anybody watching can go and activate your birds for whatever races are left on the table after September 3rd. Right, Ryan? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. And in this pick bird, it's simple. It's paying out 50, 30, 20 for each race. Um, and it doesn't matter where you clock. So if you're the first, bird in this category and you clock 10th, you're going to win 50% of the pot. Uh, it doesn't, you don't have to be first bird to clock. It's very simple. So go out there and buy your shares. Uh, show some support to your birds. Again, I, I look around and see what people are betting on. This here, uh, is pretty good betting guys. Again, I don't know what birds can go the distance and how far they're going to go, but I would probably get a couple shares of your birds at least to start and that way you, you you have them because once it starts she's open all season the shares will go quick absolutely so that's just another new fun thing that we have for those of you who want to get involved in it um what else master breeder activation is still open 75 dollars for that and of course we have our pick bird for our hotspot number five graduation ten dollars a pick three shares per bird all three items you can find on our website feathers elite pigeon auctions.com or fipa.ca i think we have about 130 dollars ish right now in our 10 dollar pick it to win it for your hotspot number five you want to uh, want me to pull up the what do you call it um the video of where we're going yeah i, I want to see it please i want to show the people what we mean this is the real skip across the water <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to put it uh, without the music, so that way you can talk during okay. it um, and just let everybody know where we're going. So we just have to wait till we get to the map part. And uh, FYI, guys, I'm just looking here. A pigeon by the name of Gloria, I just showed you. She hasn't been activated for Master Breeder. <laughs> I'm, I'm shaking my head here. Oh, look at the long yellow line, Leah. We're going to jump her now, aren't we? This is your hotspot number five, the last stop, 80 miles. As you see, we are going to be going directly north and directly over. Big body of water called Lake Simcoe. Of course, the prize points are the same. And we have your ticket to win it. We're going to get back to the map here now. Anyway, Ryan, I wanted to show you. See, this is the video quality of the arrivals do you see how it's grainy wow that's uh that's that was just me straight recording it off the ipad isn't that something you know what i'm gonna use leo i'm gonna use my video cam i'll never oh, be yeah. able to do that because he he won't be able to hit this i have to teach him i have to start button we'll try that out. we'll try that out there's our girl 
There she is. Look at her. She's beautiful. Just Good beautiful. Old Sherry. Looks like, she looks like a villager, doesn't she? Yeah, she sure does. So uh, that's where we're going this week, guys. Starting tomorrow, we're going to make our way up the Enchanted Highway 11 to Bracebridge, just outside of Bracebridge, right? Is that where we go, I think? Or is it Huntsville? Yeah. I don't know. Th this, one's, uh, this one can be a little scarier because they got to go over the water. Uh, I think, depending on how the weather is tomorrow, if it's a headwind, we're not going to go there tomorrow. We're going to go back to the rock again tomorrow if it's a headwind. I like them to do this the first time with a good tailwind. I, just my feeling, I like them to get up and I like them to look at the water and say, hey, that's nothing. It's a little puddle. Let's go. And, and when you look at the video and you see the lake, when they're in a headwind, they're lower. And closer to the water, the water looks bigger. So the higher they're up, the higher they are. They love to go, oh, look, at, there's the Canadian flag over there at the rock. Let's keep going. So we want them to skip it. We don't want them to panic. We don't want them to go like, oh, boy, you know. Uh, that's just my thought on it. Everyone has their opinions. I found the best success to get them to cross it is play them at first on the tailwind. Well, I was just checking our girl there, uh, what's her face, Wendy, and um, I was just seeing for tomorrow – Tuesday, the 30th, 3 p.m. at the village. We've got wind out of the southwest at 11 kilometers an hour. I can check release location. Where are we going again? What's the actual? Bracebridge, yeah. So you just set it. Well, whatever. I button. wanted to just make gotta, sure, okay? Can I not confirm? Gotta, just don't deny. Ricky, you got to watch out. Shuffles is back. <laughs> We get a, we get a, us Sonicans, we get a little cranky after ten o'clock, as you can tell. No, there's only one that gets cranky. Oh me, me? Uh, not, yeah. Not me. I think you need to watch the rebroadcast of this show and watch the beginning of the broadcast uh, when you were ready to strangle uh -huh. our father. The look in your face. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, here we go. Bracebridge tomorrow, three p.m. I just picked 3 p.m. as a random time, okay, folks? Okay. Uh, wind out of the southwest at 13 kilometers an hour. So that's head, shoulder wind, right? Yeah, I think maybe one more day to the rock. I I'm thinking that's going to work because, again, we've talked about it. I'd prefer, I'd prefer to let them, let, them, let them get a little bit of height. And uh, you know what? Also today, after today's trainer, a little bit of mix-up, a little bit of screw-up. It's okay. Let's bring them back to the confidence again. Let's give them some confidence. So Wednesday, Wendy says in Bracebridge at 2 p.m., the wind is out of the west at 23 kilo uh, kilometers an hour. And then Perfect. by what time? Four? Hold on. Yep. Well, that's a.m. Oh, that's Thursday. You, Wait a minute. You love Whoa. Wendy. Look at you go. You and Wendy. So it's going to be windy on Wednesday. Windy on Wednesday, according to Windy. Say that fast. 1 p.m., <laughs> 23 kilometers. 5 p.m., 24, out of the west. So maybe we'll just do the rock again tomorrow and then start Wednesday. Start Wednesday. Well, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, it's 80 miles. I think that's sufficient, don't you? Wednesday, It'll Thursday, work. Friday. Saturday, that's five times to 80. And yeah, we have I all mean, next we, week. Well, we can stretch it out a bit. I mean, again, no sense in, uh, like oh, I say, yeah. we want success. We can, we, yeah, we can stretch it out because we don't we don't start racing till the ninth. So we've got all this week and up until Wednesday of next week. we got so time. Then, it's good. That's great because if we have crap weather, in between we don't have we don't feel like we're rushed so that worked out well good job good planning oh thank you i, I planned her good I told yeah, you did. just take your time where's jerry jerry's here and ricky i don't know he's uh, i think he's on strike or something shuffles get over here boy <laughs> come on everybody wants to see jerry he can't hear you so everyone wants to see jerry so put your headphones on let's sit down and show jerry Take it easy with him. He's got, his full, got no skin on his head. What did I do to him? You put your hand right on his head. No, I didn't. I didn't hurt Jerry at all. I think. 
So here is Jerry. We're on week three of recovery. Yeah, he can still see out of this eye. Oh, he's looking a lot better. Let's see the bad part. Oh, I mean, not up close, but let's... Oh, well, I mean, nothing that a little toupee glue won't fix. We could... Or a hat. We could <clears throat> knit him a bonnet. He's got his eye about a quarter open. Don't try and push it open. His chest was all ripped open, which at first when he was eating and whatever, he was uh, got ripped underneath the wing. Wow. When he was drinking, he was losing fluid. His beak's on an angle, too. Right. But, uh, yeah, I let him out today and flew like he had a bath today, and I seen him out uh, with the other birds uh, exercising, just exercising, you know, uh, not flying around, but just doing the exercise thing, flapping his wings and moving his wings, exercising. So, and uh, amazing. Really amazing. And he's a darn nice pigeon. He's yeah. very buoyant. He, for his size, you'd never expect him to be as buoyant as he is. Jeez, right? you thought something highly of him. He's got a twenty-dollar ring on him. And he he may, he may have came back. We got some time. We'll see. He was up on a, in the loft, on, up on the perch, not where he used to be. He used to be up on the top perch. Now he's down. He's down about three feet off the floor on a perch. And he lost his. Uh... His eyes about a quarter open. Oh, wow. All right. Oh, wow. Look at little Jerry. Oh, I feel go. sorry for this guy. How he's he even little, made it back. He's a little rock star, isn't he? Ripped open under his chest. A little Speaking bit of obvious. Of warriors, uh, Lafange Richard, I'm not, you probably part. didn't see it today, but I'll show you. Today's Motivational Monday, speaking of um, wounded warriors. Excuse me, but I got some uh, phlegm. Yeah, look at that. Uh, eh? A oh. great photo by Stephen Brown. Stephen and Stephen from Ireland took this great photo oh. of their little wounded warrior making it all the way home on Saturday from the race. Oh. And uh, in that condition, and heart of a lion, soul of a warrior. It's amazing what these birds go through and the determination the and dedication to make their way back home. We can really learn a lot as humans from these uh, oh, amazing yeah. animals. Just incredible. Uh, yeah, I remember years ago, just a little story, but Don Glioni had a bird come home in race time. I don't know if it won the race, but it was right up there. Mm -hmm. And that's when we used to have to take the rubber bands off and put them in the clock, mm -hmm. counter bands. The bird came through the trap. Both his legs gone. And he walked in. The bird was on the floor doing that like this. Like, you know, no legs. He must have hit a wire at a high sp at that speed and just ripped his legs right off. Yeah. Well, hey, I mean, you take a look today. Go on our wind companion. Take a look at David Wood. It's pitch black. The bird comes in in the pitch black, yeah. lands on the board, goes in, and has a drink, and just, hey, mm. you know what? You can see in his, his face, he said, I won't make that mistake again. When the group leaves, I'll go. Who? Mona? Was that no, Mona? it wasn't Mona. It was Bonnie. Bonnie, oh, Bonnie, wow. Bonnie. Oh, wow. Amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay-Z says, chocolate syrup clock today, I think, but no position. Um, I've got the uh, benzene clocking up here. He did clock. Uh, he, yeah. where is he here? Right here. Uh, 1808. Here he is, Jay-Z. So that's right. Eight. Oh, wait, let me, you're not going to be able to see it. Cause I've got, hold on, let's do this and let's take this off. Yeah, he didn't okay. go on the toss. He's right here. Mm -hmm. Chocolate syrup, uh, 608. So he didn't go. Do you know why he didn't go, Ryan? Was he not? No, it just had, the birds were out. The birds were out again. We got those flash thunderstorms, and we got that that kind of rain that grounds them. And he, I guess, he just up on the roof sitting there. He got soaked. They didn't want to. He didn't want to come in. We had about four or five of them that didn't want to come in, so they stayed home. 
Yeah, so we've got, in case anybody wants to know, I'll just pull this back up here. Uh, the four that didn't go are these four here with the zeros. So we've got chocolate syrup. We have uh, bologna. We have striker. And warfighter didn't go. How come warfighter didn't go? That was uh, the greens winner from yesterday. Yeah. Same reason. <laughs> just gotcha. didn't. 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 Did, did. Sometimes you get it. They just they come in or they don't come in. And they're feeling good, you know. Main thing, he's th he's there for the money. Oh yeah, that's War the main thing. Warfighter, right? yeah, won money uh, yesterday. Nothing wrong with the pigeons. Is that, is that the Mealy Mealy Pied? Yeah, Mealy Pied. Nice yeah. Pigeon. yeah, yeah. Uh, Frank Icorn, I had two come home, one big hole in the crop feed and water spilling out. Oh, and one with a busted up wing. Amazing, they still come, isn't it? And Frank Icorn, of course, the breeder of the original Hedgewig. What a great story that is. Guys, if you ever have time on your hands, go back and watch, rewatch season one, and uh, you'll find out all about Hedgewig and uh, the heart of Hedgewig and how Hedgewig was a one loft participant in our one loft race, bred by Frank, Frank Icorn, went out on a toss, couldn't find his way back to our loft, made it back to Frank's loft where it was born, and actually flew so hard to get there that it when Frank went to go pick it up, it died right then and there. And that's why we have the Hedgewig Hard Award. Yeah, and, and next week, uh, now that you said that story, I'll bring in old Hedgy. He still flies with us here at the village. Oh, Frank yeah. Took we'll the have time to, and yeah, energy for the new to people who may, we'll have to point him out, Ryan. You'll have to show everybody Hedgewig, the original, who, who we talk about. And I think, Ryan, yeah. you wanted to also talk about another bird. Yeah, I, I don't have the bird here tonight because we got tied up. Um, I don't know. But uh, there's a pigeon there from Lizitano. Uh, the bird's name's uh, Knuckles. And interesting story about this pigeon. It's a very nice pigeon. It's like super show quality. It's a small hand, beautiful, perfect amount of piding. The feathers are perfect. The molt is perfect. The muscle is perfect. The vents are perfect. And it's a very perfect pigeon. But I can remember letting them out and all the birds going up onto the Twisted Sister. You know, we always laugh about the lazy ones. And that, that's the bird there. And trust me, it doesn't look like that now. It looks like a million dollars. That pigeon, I would, when, when the show was going, I'd curse under my breath. I did that thing. That, that. You know what? You're never going to make this. You're never. This thing, I, would ne I don't think I've seen it loft fly three times. Nothing. Well... Put them in the basket, start at two miles. And uh, I've watched this bird progressively improve, improve, improve. Uh, and, and today we let him out. And the bird finally is now he's law flying. But he didn't law fly the whole time. He just sat on the roof and run to the back of the roof and go and hide and do this and do that. And there's that story where we say, you know, there's that one out of the hundred. That's the story of that pigeon. And that pigeon right now is smoking. And if I had him in my loft, he could be the best pigeon here. He'd be winning all the time. No, he's winning. And, he wins in your loft almost every I'll time. I'll tell you right now. What? That's the old saying. Mr. Basket yes. will be the ruler. Mr. Yes. Basket will eliminate him, or Mr. Basket will help to make him better. And I guess in this case, it's helped to make him hey, we had a lot, lot stronger. We had a few lazy ones. They've disappeared. Okay? Mm -hmm. That pigeon there, though, I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. And And... It just it's doing it and now i handle it it's got everything that it had but it's you know it's now more developed and uh it's doing really really good and it's nice to see that still 40 years you're playing pigeons now you, you learn again right you say hey sometimes you got to give those ones let the basket help you out and the basket fixes it for you and the basket's working good with this one um, Mike Parrish says, do you happen to look into what happened to my $10 pick, paid for two, went back and invoice says not paid on race day? Uh, yes, it does say paid now. Um, and FYI, any pick birds that you make on your account, if it doesn't show paid instantly, I'm not, we're not Amazon, I'm not set up. So it's instant payment and it happens instantly. Everything has to be hand done manually by myself and it has to be done in three different places. And because everybody's picking at all different times, I only go in and update a couple times a week because so I'm not just constantly, if not, I'd be spending all day just going and checking and then updating and checking and updating. So 
I check multiple times a week and then I update them at that time. So if, if you pick a bird and you don't see that it's marked paid right away or even two days later, I make sure that all the picks are in first and then I go through and I go through the payments. So be patient, it'll happen. It's just not as quick and instantaneous as say Amazon or anywhere else where you buy. Remember, this is basically an auction site that I'm trying to make work for this little purpose here for pick birds and that. So it doesn't work perfectly, but we're doing our best. So that's why if you check now, Mike, you're going to see it says paid. Frank Eichhorn says better dust him off. Oh yeah, that's the thing. How do you clean? How do you clean taxidermy? Mike Vandriak, any thoughts on that one? Vacuum, blow them. That's all. <laughs> just blow them with a the vacuum. Just, just blow. You know what? We should mount them on uh, Ricky's twisted sister there. But the rain. We don't want to do that. Oh yeah, I don't want to get them wet. Nice. Yeah. nice. It was very nice that Frank did that. And and uh, every year we give one bird the Hedgy Heart Award. Maybe this will be the winner. We we don't know. We got we got quite a few candidates. Uh, What's it have to do to earn that? Uh, just people are going to vote. It's pigeons that show the most heart. So maybe this pigeon might get into one race. Maybe you won't. You know, but people Even can if vote he on it. Sorry. Even yeah. if he doesn't, he's a nominee. Jerry is a nomination already for this year's Hedgy Heart Award because he showed heart to make it home in that condition. I nominate Jerry for this year's Hedgy Heart Award. He'll be one of our candidates. Doesn't mean he's going to win. Everybody gets to vote. That's how we do it every year. You nominate Hedgy Heart Award candidates, and then everybody votes at the end of the season. Bird with the most votes gets the award. Frank Eichhorn, Feather Duster. Got it. I'm going to, uh, I'll have to give you the numbers of those two birds the 67 from John Tavares and the, uh, the blue cock from uh, De uh, De Delano in Poland. All the pox, heavy. I mean, you've seen the pox. The birds are right up front on, on Sunday's race. The big chunks. Birds, I, you just can't believe it. I can't believe it. They're working hard with what they've got. And, and you know what? It, it, in the perfect world, too, we wouldn't, we, you wouldn't race. You, you, you know, if you had no time, limit, you just shut it down, let everything run through. But we don't we're have keeping our goal. Yeah. We are. Um, do we have more questions? Let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, Michael Peebler, you keep a clear case over them after you stuff them. Yeah, we'll have to work on getting that clear case. We like them out au naturel. Hey, let's go with the dust. He's a bit dusty, <laughs> but he's, he's, he's good. He's fast. See how good he is. Great in the headwind. Okay, great show tonight. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be going to the rock. Any idea, Ryan? That plug's no good. What time? Sorry. Uh, I'll be again in the afternoon. Afternoon sometime we'll we'll run it again. I mean, I don't know. Maybe we'll change our plans. But more than likely, we're going to go to the Rock again tomorrow. I think after today's toss, let's let them regroup. Let them rebuild. They'll have another headwind again. What's great about a headwind is you get, I call it free mileage. So if they're, you know. To, to fly 21 miles and it's a it's a 10 mile an hour headwind you're giving them like an extra 12 13 miles and they're working a little different type of wind beat a little different it's different so you know headwinds guys you don't always have to crank them out to 100 miles hey 20 30 40 miles good enough you, you're getting it you're getting the workout into it it's a different workout uh, Mike Parrish, so when is the first race? Uh, the schedule is on our website, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. But in the meantime, I will, let me get the comment off. I don't know if you can really see it too good here, but I wish we were showing it there before. So there we have our September schedule. So the first race will be September the 9th. So anywhere you see those little pins, that's a race. So the first race will be September 9th. And we run right through until October. But if you want to have a detailed look at the schedule, if you head on over to our website, I'll put you in the corner, Ryan, uh, FIPA.ca. I'll put it in the bottom. 
so you guys can see. There we go. FIPA.ca, that's the website. That's where you're going to get all up-to-date information on our races and our activations. If you want to see where we're going uh, this coming week on our website, on our homepage, you can click on the video here for your hotspot five. It'll show you the line map. Um, and if you scroll down, you will see our schedule right here for both the, uh, for all eight races. Um, you can even open it up and you can look at it bigger if you want right there. So there we go. September and October race schedule is listed on our website. So you can go check that out if you want. Um, also wanted to let you know if you miss any of our shows, if you miss our main shows, like our graduation shows, I always put the rebroadcast up on our website, usually in the evening or the next day um, on our homepage. So if you missed it, you can check it out here. If you click on it, you can watch the rebroadcast of yesterday's uh, graduation. And um, I think that's it. And the family show, I usually put last week's family show up here on our homepage as well. So if you miss it, you can head on over to our website and uh, check it out. I think this was last week's show. So just wanted to let you guys know if you're looking for information on our race or what's going on, check our website out because we always have it updated as best as we can on there. Good job. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I'm looking here. Lots of good birds to activate uh, in Master Breeder. Man, if you're watching, don't, uh, don't, I mean, I, I'm t again, I'm going to throw it out there, Leah Gloria. She's been, in, we've shown her, what, three weeks almost in a row now? Two or three yeah. weeks in a row? Mm -hmm. uh, again, what's it out of? Uh, uh, um, diamond uh, Formula. No. no, Diamond Loft. The Munichs, the Munichs and Diamond Loft. Okay, Martin that's the F sixteen. Yeah. yeah, and and Munichs. And then I looked at the next bird, the clock, the fourth place bird, Harry Paul. How much money did Harry win last year here? All of his birds are the Munichs. You should ask. You should call Bill and Harry, and because they've got some prize winnings, and ask them if they want to reinvest in their birds. <laughs> Maybe they don't know what's going on, or they're not sure, or they don't know how to do it. We should probably give them a call. Jay-Z wants to know, so the first race starts $100 pick birds. Yes. So for our eight races, we will have both the $10 pick birds that we have now going on for our hotspots. That's going to continue. And then we were also going to introduce the $100 pick birds for the eight races. That's right. So it starts on race one. Yeah, and uh, remember the hundred dollar pick birds. It's a simple win. All you got to do is be the first one. So 50, 30, 20. And uh, owners, buy your birds now. You got till Sunday, and then we're going to open it up to the public. And yes, guys, the bird you want right now, I'm going to give you. Don't say I didn't give you a tip. Gibbs. The owner's going to let it go. And you know what they say? Should have made the pick bird higher, Leah. <laughs> Okay, I think we're going to wrap it up for tonight. Great show, great input. Great talk about the race schedule. We can agree to disagree. I think we all agree that it's not the ideal schedule. But we will work with you, with our club members, to make sure you guys have a successful, fun season as well. Not to worry about that. Ryan will be back on tomorrow. We're going to head to the Rock. Get your picks in. I think that's it. Congratulations to our winners. Yeah, good job. Great national anthems. And who's gonna who's gonna up the anthems this week? Who's gonna get out there and give us a sing song? Who's gonna do it? Yeah, who's gonna do it? Who will it be? I agree. Good night to all. Leah, Ricky, uh, great job. Congratulations to the birds that have won so far. Congratulations to the birds that are still in the game. And uh, a big congratulations to my little buddy Jeffrey. He did her. He's he did home. Her. Hmm. Absolutely. And we're going to check back again next week with Jerry. We wish him a speedy recovery. And that's it. We're going to sign off. I'm Leah. That's Ryan Lofman Richard. We're from the Pioneer Racing Pigeon Club of Ontario. The Pioneer One Laugh Race. We hope you guys have a great week. Thank you guys for joining us. And thank you for your input and support. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. That's it for me. Say goodbye, Ryan. Bye for now, guys. And as for Ricky, Ricky shuffles. Away he goes.
Bye for now. Thanks, guys. Good night, guys.